Hey guys, what's going on? Tyraku here, and today I have a treat for you guys. This is going to be awesome. Um, definitely looking forward to showcasing these two champions. So we're inside of Barrel Riders account, who is submitting these two champions for our unique champion build, unique team build competition I have going on the Discord channel. So if you're interested in joining, if you have a unique team build or champion build that you want to try to enter and possibly win some money, or win some gems, then definitely, definitely join the Discord channel, mess, send, send me a DM, and we can get you joined into this event. Now, Barrel Rider has told me that he has two champions that can basically solo almost all the dungeons and the, fa well, take not solo, duo, all the dungeons, except for Fire Knight, and Faction Wars 21. By dungeons, I mean Ice Golem, Spider, dragon fire knight they can do ice golem spider and dragon crazy and faction wars stage 21 as well so these two champions basically go together better than peanut butter and jelly all right so this is going to be awesome to watch i'm looking forward to it guys now if you don't mind go ahead and hit the like button to help this get pushed out to more people because these champions i'm about to show you guys that go so well together are probably inside a lot of people's vaults the these two champions are Cantra the Cyclone and Elder Skarg. These two champions, who once were mostly vault champions, Cantra's been getting a little bit more popularity on this channel, I feel like. Um, but she, plus Elder Skarg, who used to be a soul vault guardian, nothing else. But these two people can do amazing work. Now, if you're just here to see their build and you want to go ahead and get started with it yourself, let me go ahead and show you what these champions are wearing. So Cantra is wearing a toxic set which is crucial um barrel rider told me well first off barrel rider told me that mtg jedi helped him build these two champions and mtg did do a video on this as well so definitely guys i'm gonna link that in the description below go over there and watch this video show him some support show him some love uh but like i said cantra is wearing a toxic set this is gonna pair so well with her ability two and ability three okay so her ability two attacks all enemies three times now you may be thinking, can I place multiple poisons? No, I believe you can only place one poison, unfortunately, but you got a 75% chance of placing that one poison. Now, why do you want to place a poison? Well, she hasn't placed poisons already, but this ability, this passive, has a 75% chance of placing provoke for one turn on enemies under five or more debuffs. Now, obviously, three plus one is not five. Um, three plus one is four, but look at Elder Skarg. Okay, so she's placing three from her A2. Elder Skarg has an ability that says attacks one enemy three times, places an extra hit for each buff or debuff on the target, can place up to three extra hits, places an HP burn debuff for two turns, and a true fear debuff for one turn on all enemies if this attack places all three extra hits, steals all buffs from the target after the attack. So if you're following along, Cantra has her three hit ability that has a chance to land three debuffs, which it doesn't always land all three of them. Sometimes it lands two, sometimes it may even only land one. But if it does only land two, you have the chance of landing an additional debuff from her toxic set that she's wearing. And then wrapping this around with Elder Skarg, that makes three debuffs. He works very well with three debuffs. Bada bing, bada boom. You got burn, true fear, plus her three. And now she's doing provoke on everybody. This is absolutely crazy. If you want to go the extra step, throw a frostbite set, include it with this toxic set, then every time she provokes, she's gonna have a chance to freeze them. So let me stop it just going over this, stop explaining it so much. Let's go ahead and jump into a dungeon and show you guys how this works. So with two champions, you can essentially now just start farming your food in dungeons, okay? Get gear, get your food leveled up, easy, easy. Okay, let's go ahead and start this up. Do it fully auto, I assume is what it is. Now, some of these dungeon runs, I'm not going to do the whole, like, show the whole thing. Obviously, like, Dragons, Fire Knight, not not Fire Knight, Ice Golem. Um, those two are probably going to take a little bit longer to get through the waves. But this is going to be so good. Now, I did go over the Champions gear. Let me, after this, I'm going to go over what they're actually, like, their stats look like and their masteries. But I just want to show you guys what this actually looks like doing this run. Um, so... Obviously, the damage here is coming from Elder Skarg. Incredible, incredible, incredible damage. 
um, all the HP burn, HP burns what you need. Uh, that was a little bit weird there. Um, unfortunately, he did his. Okay, so no, never mind. I guess I don't know enough about him. So I thought he did the wrong ability, but he knows better what he's supposed to be doing than I do. So I'm just gonna sit back, let him do his thing. Um, I thought he used, I thought the animation was different there, but perfect. Uh, either way, look at look at H, the HP burn. Okay, so we have HP burn on all these champions. He's weak affinity, but it's okay because it just says if it has three or more debuffs, then he places HP burn. It doesn't say he can weak hit. I don't think he can even weak hit on these people. I don't really know for sure, to be honest. But either way, he's placing them on everybody. I'll have to see. I assume it can't be a weak hit because I believe it just places them. But either way, Elder Scarred, amazing champion for spiders. And especially when paired with Cantra. I mean, you can use him without Cantra, of course. And he's very, very good like that. But when you have Cantra doing this little synergy and placing three debuffs by herself, makes him very, very easy to place burned. And it looks like we have HP burn on everybody here. Um, okay, we don't have one there. I oh, know we do. It's just so many debuffs I can't see anything. Uh, so yeah, we got on everybody. So I'm going to assume you can't weak hit or anything like that. So like I said, once we finish this match, I'll go ahead and go over their stats, what they're wearing. I'll go over their mastery. So if you want to go ahead and build it, then you can. Um, but yeah, <laughs> doing some work. Don't even need term meter reduction. Obviously, we're not speed running these dungeons, okay? This is, I think, is the only duo of champions that are from the same faction that can solo so much. So two minutes and eight seconds is not a bad Spire's time at all. Let's go in here and look at what they're wearing. So Kandra, we have seen what she was wearing. She's wearing defense gloves with some triple roll and speed, defense chest plate, speed boots. These are the pieces. People want me to show these pieces um, when I'm going through the account, so I'm definitely gonna do that now. Um, now the total stats. This is what she's looking like. She look, looks like she's running um, resistance, pretty good level, accuracy enough to land her debuffs. The resistance is obviously to block the poisons from the spider. A good amount of defense, lower HP than Elder Scarg, if you pay attention to that. I believe that is to make sure she's tanking those spider hits. Elder Scarg is running a good amount of accuracy, so we can land those debuffs on the spiderlings. And, well, I mean, we need burn, right? And then good speed, he's faster than Cantra, so definitely keep track of that. Pay attention. Um, the Masteries, this is what he has going on for the Masteries. Uh, so, pretty, pretty good. Now, this is obviously increases damage inflicted to targets with Stun, Sleep, Fear, True Fear, or Freeze. So, True Fear, he's doing an extra 12% damage. Obviously, the Burn does not increase with that damage, but his hits do. So, it's going to be awesome. War Master for some extra damage against the bosses whenever he hits them. And then Cantra is looking like this. Of course, she's wearing the, uh, the Support Tree to help her debuffs last longer. Uh, so on and so forth. So definitely this setup is the way to go if you want to follow this exact build. Uh, let's go look at some more dungeons, guys. So let's go over the dragons and see how this works. Now, like I was saying about this little tournament thing, let me just go ahead and take Bad L out of the lead and then we will throw in this. So, I mean, as you can see, Barrel Rider is all about that efficiency when leveling up. Bad L soloing dragon. But now he has a champion, two people doing it. Obviously, if you can solo it with Bad L, that's the step above this. But if you can take two champions and solo these dungeons, that is huge. And these two champions can do the faction wars as well by themselves, at least age 21, by themselves, which is incredible. So I'm going to go ahead and fast forward this until we get to the dragon. So once we get there, I'll uh, restart the video at that point. This could take a little bit of time to do the waves. But honestly, they're doing it fairly quick. But either way, I'll see you guys at the dragon. Hey guys, so we just got to the dragon. The waves took about, well, two minutes and 20 seconds, as you can see. We're doing the dragon now. So you have Cantra with Warmaster. You have Elder Scarg with Warmaster as well. Cantra is also placing up some poisons from her toxic set. So this is all working very well. Elder Scarg has what I believe is um, the life still set on. So he's not going to have any problems staying alive. Cantra has some self heals whenever debuffs expire. Now, I don't know. Let's actually see this. So I guess she heals whenever debuffs expire, right? So does she get only one heal? I was curious if she healed from the poisons when they expire or not, which is going to be kind of hard to tell from this. Um, she should be healed three times if that's the case. I want to say she probably doesn't get healed when, her, when those poisons expire. Maybe she did. Um, I guess right here would be a good way to tell. Let's go ahead and hit him again, and let's watch to see if she heals when this expires. She did. That's actually really cool. 
So what I'm talking about is her passive. Um, it says heals this champion by 1,250 HP each time a debuff expires on an Oh, each time a debuff expires on an enemy. So it's not just her debuff. Sweet. Okay. So that makes the toxic set even better for Kandra because she's placing all those poisons, especially on the spiders. Um, it's only a two-term poison. So once they expire, she's getting a heal. Now, they don't last very long because Elder Scarg's burning them all. So that is what it is. But that's, that's, that is a pretty cool synergy. Just going on with that. Overall, the Toxic set, another amazing set for Cantra. I feel like Cantra is one of like, she used to be a champion that I didn't really pay attention too much to. But after this like unique champion build series, I'm starting to see that Cantra is probably one of the champions who have the most like versatile builds that you could do that actually makes sense. I mean, we Toxic gear, we threw her in Frost gear and Frostbite gear. Um, you could make sense with her in tons of other sets just straight defense crit rate crit damage all kinds of things so very very versatile champion so we did dragon's lair in four minutes and 22 seconds okay this is not a speed run but this is incredible if you're going through progression and you just have these two champions they can if not by themselves you could add a few maybe another one or two people like if you're actually just coming up in the game you can add somebody to go alongside them and this makes all this content so much easier, okay? So if you're seeing this like, oh, I don't have that gear to actually solo these levels with those champions, you don't have to. You can use these two and then add a little bit of support champions or something like that. Obviously, you wanna make sure the support champions don't get targeted, but you can easily, easily build a team like that. So this little duo, while they can solo things, it may be out of your range of what you can gear reasonably, so yeah, just throw a few extra champions in there and you're good to go. So now we're on Ice Golem. Um, I'm going to go ahead and let this fast forward. And then once we get to the actual Ice Golem himself, I will jump back in here and do a little more commentating. So I'll see you guys in just a second. All right, guys. So we are on to the Ice Golem now. It took us three minutes, so a little bit longer than Dragon, but it's okay. Ice Golem is typically a little bit slower dungeon anyways than Dragon. So let's see how this plays out. Obviously, poisons, HP burn, and things like that are very good against the Ice Golem. Because if the damage, so you have up here his ability that attacks one enemy whenever the Ice Golem HP drops below 80%, 60%, 45, 30, 15. This attack will revive any dead allies to 100%. Now, if his HP drops below those percentages because of poison ticks, HP burn ticks, or anything like that, then he actually doesn't get this ability to activate. Now, obviously, when you hit him and he actually does drop because of a hit, then yeah, he'll activate it, and your team will probably get messed up a little bit. This is what really messes people up when trying to fight the Ice Golem, but you may see here that we'll skip a few of those thresholds just because of the HP burn and the poisons activating. So the next one's going to be at 60%. Let's watch out for that. So he probably maybe just passed the 60% mark. It looks like it. I mean, with my estimation... That's about 60%. I don't know. I had to get like a measure. I don't know. I don't know how much HP he has, but that looks like it's 60%. So we just passed that mark for sure. It didn't activate. So as you can see, whenever those, so I guess that's probably the 45% mark. She actually did damage, activated, and he revived his people. So now, as long as we don't hit him to activate that, then he's not going to do that crazy big hit. So the next one's at 30%. Hopefully we kill these two adds on the side and then the poison ticks get him below that 30% and then he won't hit us. Not, not with the big smash that really messes teams up. We should be clearing that 30% soon. Luckily, whenever these two guys are up and alive, there's no hits other than those AOE hits that actually do direct damage to him. So it's all just um, dots. So damage over time effects, HP burn, and those small poisons, which even a 2.5% poison is pretty big when you have this big of an HP bar, okay? So hopefully we can finish him off. So we definitely passed the 30% mark. We definitely are about to pass the 15% mark if we haven't already. And hopefully he doesn't get any activate anything. So yeah, so there you go. He only activated one res out of a potential um, five. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Ice Golem Peak duoed with Cantra and Elder Scar. Now, last but not least, Let's go into the Faction Wars. Obviously, this team is not going to do Fire Knight. Fire Knight requires multi-hit champions, so it's not going to do that. But the three big dungeons you need for Arbiter 
they can do fine, okay? And a lot of people have Cantra from the previous fusion. She wasn't terribly difficult to get. So definitely, definitely you have use for her. Let's go into Faction Wars and let's go ahead and check this out. Six minutes and 33 seconds. Look at this. So we we have uh, Cantra and Elder Scarg, and then we're bringing in some food. Do you even get experience from Faction Wars? I think you do a little bit, but not a whole lot. So get this started up, turn it on auto, and let them do their their thing. So we're going to clear the waves. Probably going to do the same thing as last time. We're going to let them go through a little bit, and then I'll be right back whenever we get to the boss stage of this run. All right, guys, so the dynamic duo is at the boss stage now. Not a single problem with the waves. We did it in 2 minutes and 43 seconds, and now we just whittle down this boss. So this boss fight did take 6 minutes earlier, so I'll probably end up fast-forwarding this, but we'll let it play out a little bit. I don't want to just make this last too long. So what I'll do is I will hide my webcam and I'll go ahead and speed this up so you guys can see what happens a little bit quicker than waiting three more minutes. This video is getting kind of long as it is. So I'll be back in just a second. What you think, what you think about When you're born into a fire All right, guys, and there we have it. Faction Wars Stage 21, Dragons, Ice Golem, and Spiders, all done with two champions from the same faction, obviously, because they also did Faction Wars. So this team is definitely an awesome, awesome team. Thank you, Barrel Rider, for letting me showcase this. MTG, thank you for helping him build this as well. Very cool. Um, if anybody else, like I said, has an interesting team you'd like to showcase, definitely send me a DM. I'm very, very much interested in these. I think we're getting a lot of cool content from this. And overall, this is, this is exciting to see. Some new teams that people don't typically think of, especially come from champions who were once Vault Guardians. So thank you guys very much if you made it to, this to the end of this video. Thank you all for watching. If you want to continue watching some videos, click the ones that are about to pop up. And if not, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.